in your object-oriented programming classes or in any pretty much any object-oriented programming text, they will say that static data is data that is shared amongst all instances of a class, which in object-oriented or terminology, that's an okay way of thinking about it. But I actually want to take the term static and show you what it really means. If you have a variable that is shared amongst all instances of a class, then why don't we use the keyword shared instead of static? Right, what is static is I remember being a brand new programming like static. The only thing I could think about with static was uh, st static cling, right? Your static electricity. That's the only thing that stuck in my head, which has nothing to do with what static means in programming. So I had a real hard time wrapping my head around this the staticness thing. And anyway, I'm I'm, I'm going to show you what static really means and why we use the term static. I think it'll clear some air for you, but. I just want to point out that Visual Basic, if you do any Visual Basic programming, they don't use the word static. They use the word shared, which makes sense. A, a static variable is something that is shared amongst all instances of a class in object-oriented programming vil. However, static data is one of the first types of data that existed when programming was in its infancy, long before objects came into the scene, long before C Sharp, Java, C++, any of those object-oriented programming languages came into the scene. We were using static data. So I am going to show you what that means and blah, blah, blah. Let's, let's, let's start coding here. First of all, let's use static variables as, as what your teacher would describe them as something that's shared amongst instances of a class, just to get that out of the way. I'm going to say class cow. We've created cows before. I'm going to say static int num instances. And I will say int id, and then I will make a constructor. I will say id gets pre-increment num instances. So every individual cow will have its own copy of id because this is a non-static variable. However, all instances of cow will share, don't just love that word share, will share the data ex uh, associated with num instances. Okay, now let's go down here and create some cows. Cow, oops, not const, cow. Betsy, let's bring her back into the picture. We've seen her in previous videos. And let's create Georgie, like so. And I actually want to execute this program and just step through it with you. So F11, oh wow, those are scary windows. Let me get them off the screen. Uh, let's see, cow, Betsy gets new cow. I've drawn this diagram several times. Before this, we have our stack, we have our heap. I'll just separate them like so. The stack, you know, grows up and down. As we call functions, we put more and more variables, local variables on the stack. And as we return from functions, we take them off. And look at me saying functions when we call them methods in C sharp. The heap, on the other hand, we can randomly allocate data however we want, wherever we want. But generally, the algorithm is to keep things nice and compact as much as possible. Let me erase this off the screen now and put my divider back in and so we're creating Betsy here Betsy will be a reference that goes on the stack because Betsy is defined within the scope of a method there that's we've seen several examples of that in previous videos and new goes out to the heap because cow is a is a reference type and so new will go out to the heap and say I need to create a cow out here and generally we like to keep things compact creates enough room for a cow, which would be, in this case, a single int and also the type object pointer and the sync block index, which I'm going to ignore from here on out because you've seen those in previous videos. I don't think we need to talk about those things anymore. Okay, so this is going to be the ID for this particular cow, which we will name Betsy. I'll just put a B here. Let's step into this, F11. Num instances defaults to zero. We, if we don't explicitly give it a default value. The default value for everything in .NET is zero or null, which is nice. Thank you .NET for managing my life and not allowing me to do something stupid. Num instance is a zero, we will increment that to a one and then assign the result to ID. So this cow, which is Betsy, has an ID of one. We shall return F11 and move on to Georgie. But before we do that, we must do this assignment here. I believe if I hover over Betsy, Betsy will still be null. If I hit F11 now, that reference references the cow 
whose ID is one. Let me let me just draw that reference like so. There you go, reference. I I'd rather use the term pointer because I'm C plus plus ish, but whatever, I'll deal with it. All right, same deal with Georgie. New cal into the constructor. Num instances is one, but we're going to increment it up to a two. So that's a two, and so Georgie's ID will be a two, and I should have allocated room for Georgie here. Here's Georgie's ID. It is now a two. Georgie is another reference on the stack. So we'll do that like there. Here's Georgie. Let's return F11 and assign Georgie to the new cow. There we go. We are referencing that cow out there. Okay, and I can even prove that with a debugger by hovering over Georgie. Georgie's a cow. ID of two. Betsy cow. ID of one. Very cool. All right, we have the stack, we have the heap. We've seen that several times in previous videos. Hopefully you understand, okay, yeah, dynamic stuff, reference types, they're out on the heap, that's cool. Stuff that's local in a function or method, as, you'd like to, as we like to call them in C Sharp. Uh, they go on the stack and they grow and they shrink. But now I have this num instances. All right, where is num instances? Any idea? It's this static variable. Where did it go? Any idea? Okay, this is where the term static, where its real roots come from. When I say static, I am saying that data exists even before the program begins execution. Okay, think about that. Long before we, in C, not even C++, in C. Okay, we, we'd make variables out here. Let me stop the debugger. We could do global variables. You can even still do this in C++, but we could say int whatever. Right? And it's just out here globally. Right? It's not inside of a function. There's no new allocating it. It's just there. Okay, and the C++ compiler or C compiler, whichever language you're doing, it has to take our executable and say, oh, well, I need to embed some memory inside of the executable for this variable. All right, now there's some details there I'm kind of leaving out, but to make that absolutely perfectly true, I've got to give it a value other than zero, otherwise it'll do some tricks to optimize there. But here we go. Here's whatever. I said it's five, and so literally in the executable, the compiler has to allocate room to say, okay, we have this whatever variable, and even before main begins executing, we will load that memory up. It'll be part of the program as we load the program into memory, and... It's when, whenever you see whatever, it's this D word, as we call it, double word in the assembly land, but an int to 32 bits, 4 bytes, and its value will be 5. Okay? That is what static means. Another thing, another way you can think of static, when I say static, I'm, I, compile time. Okay, we always say the compiler has to do a static analysis, which means a compile time analysis, meaning the memory for this variable is allocated at compile time by the compiler in the executable. So when the executable is loaded, then we will have this in RAM. Okay, now RAM is RAM. It's bits and bytes. Whether it's a stack or heap, it's all bits and bytes. It's just a difference of how it behaves. But now we have the static variable, whatever, and it's put in the static area of memory, which is not stack, it's not heap, it's... It's the static area of memory. I'll say static here. Okay, and then notice I drew this rectangle smaller than the stack and the heap because the stack, it has room to grow. It has room to shrink. We've seen if you run over the top, you cause a stack overflow exception. The heap, same thing. Go create a, an algorithm that'll create a zillion big objects out on the heap and not leak the references to them, and all of a sudden you'll run out of room on the heap. So that's what we call dynamic memory. The opposite of static, it's dynamic memory. It can grow and shrink and run time, okay? But static, no, we know that we need room for one, one int right here. Let me get rid of the illegal C-sharp variable now. But same idea, let's get rid of, let, let's allocate enough room for this one int. The compiler can allocate it. And I don't need it to grow or shrink. I know it's an int and it's going to exist for the entire program. And that's that. So I'll put num instances here. Num instances right there and I guess when we're done with the program it increments all the way to 2 okay because we assign that value to Georgie there so static compile time not dynamic doesn't need to grow or shrink known at the beginning of the program exists before main begins exists after main terminates okay only taken away once the process is closed now I want to bring this int oops int whatever in here 
back in here. Yes, this is still illegal in C sharp, but I want to point something out to you. This variable, is there any difference between saying int whatever out here in global land or just putting it down, putting it inside of a class? Okay, a global is a global. People think, this is another argument I hear sometimes with object-oriented programming. Well, it's not as global because we put it inside of a class, which I can agree with. Yeah, we're kind of grouping things inside of classes now. But I could just say public on this thing. And then wherever I want to, I can say cow.num instances and change it all I want to and access it. And all of a sudden, that's going to turn into spaghetti code and headache and stuff like that. But it's still a global. Okay, why am I getting... Oh, that's too big of a number. Let's do a real number. So, regardless of whether its scope is inside of a class, which we have to do in C Sharp, or out here in global land, which we can do perfectly fine in C or C++ land, a global is still a global. It's still static. The memory exists before the program begins and after the program terminates until the process is removed. I'm probably beating a dead horse there. but Anyway, 